That is hands down my favorite Kirby dance. I love that dance so much. Here we have Orange Ocean. I love this soundtrack so much. This soundtrack is gorgeous. They also had a, um... There was the Japanese version of the of a Kirby episode. It was the one where it's Kawasaki and his friend, they're doing a cook-off. And, um... King DDD has Eskar Goon sabotage all the food that Tiff helps Kawasaki make. And, um... Whenever they are doing the sequences where they're making the food, um, they play a remixed variation of, of, of only a portion of the soundtrack, but they play a remixed um, variation of the soundtrack. <clears throat> I believe it was the, they were the only two, but one thing I love is that in Kirby Star Allies, they reused the Vegetable Valley music from this game and this music, the Orange Ocean music from this game. Not Kirby's Adventure, specifically the versions from this game. They reused they use the Vegetable Valley soundtrack and this soundtrack for stages or levels, whatever they're called in Star Allies. I'll just call them stages and no levels, I apologize. They use the Vegetable Valley and Orange Ocean soundtracks for stages in... Kirby Star Allies. Here we have a difficult boss because of this water. <clears throat> also another optional boss. This fan fan is hyper as well. Seriously, I love this Orange Orange music so much. It is so good. Again, the remixes in this game of the soundtracks from Kirby's Adventure are incredible. Now, it's intended that you had to be a fan fan to be able to get... to be able to break these metal blocks, like... Not like that. However, alternative thing you can do, inhale both of these enemies and let the uh, roulette wheel cycle through to hammer. And then you can just break through with hammer. So if you don't want to bother with the fan fan boss or, or are trying to and having trouble with it, just come here and inhale both those spark enemies to get the hammer ability. And again, let the roulette roll all the way to the end of it. I was so ecstatic and extremely happy when I heard the soundtrack and the stage that it plays in at Kirby's Ally, Kirby Star Allies for the first time. And what's awesome is I do believe when you're underwater in that stage in the orange... Oh. Yay, my favorite Kirby dance. Um, I do believe when you're underwater in the stage that plays the soundtrack, it actually changes because you're underwater, too. So they actually had to add that in, that change in for the Orange Ocean soundtrack in Kirby Star Allies to change when you're underwater. So I want to say for that, they actually had to do different instrumentation of that exact same soundtrack for this. Sound, er, 
a different interpretation of the soundtrack for being underwater in that stage, which is really awesome. You gotta love details like that, such as the new music that there was that was introduced in certain state or certain levels in Mario Maker as well. More and then even more so because there were more of them in uh, Mario Maker 2. Also, yeah, I screwed up and I can't exit the level either. Of course, the frickin' other enemy's not going to respawn. Oh well, I should still be fine. Because you're intended to need the stone ability, but much like in the previous level with me quote unquote needing the throw ability, they once again give you two spark enemies. So, get one to hop over that little peg in the ground. There we go. Now they're next to each other, and they held on the left wheel go all the way to the end. Is that a mere coincidence? Did they do that intentionally knowing, oh, here's an alternative, or is that like, or is that mere coincidence and completely unintentional that you can get hammer in both the previous stage and this one when you're intended to need to fight Fan Fan in the previous stage for throw to get the switch in that stage and intended to need to get stone and take it here for this stage? Coincidence or intentional? I would love to know. Also, frickin' light blue Scarpies. I could have had a UFO all well. That would have been short lived anyway because this is the, this right here is the last room in the stage anyway, so no big deal. Aw, I'm slightly sad I didn't think of UFO. Anyway. <laughs> Stretching, good god. I keep in mind this video was Yogurt Yard is where I need to cut out that dead part of the video. Ugh. Also museum. This one gives you a wheel. But yeah, this is starts underwater, which it's perfect because you start underwater there. This one. Clouds in the background. Oh, yeah, also, it's another animation. You gotta freaking love the o orange ocean to set a sunset. You gotta love the background, too. It is so gorgeous. And those trees. And then this looks like you're on a pirate ship. Gotta say goodbye to Hammer because need to go in here and get the laser ability. Stupid freaking crap. He got me in my speeder on his wall. But yeah, they ch troll slash cheese you in this. They're like, oh hey, here's fire, but there's no way you can light the freaking torch with that. Now, in future Kirby games you could because in future Kirby games you could have Kirby spit his fire or breathe his fire up and down. You can press up or down on the dark shuttle pad or the control stick and aim his fire up and down. So in future Kirby games you probably could hit that with fire, but in this game you can't. I love these freaking sails. You know, like the little 
boring in the wind effect they gave them. Also, um, I think you skip a part of this stage when you go for that switch. So I'm gonna do this stage again. Here we have more Ice Cream Island music. Oh, also, yeah. Go back to stage 3 when I'm done with this. That's bullcrap. Yeah, don't go up because hidden door here. And if you look, this is out of place. Because you can see what looks like to be a part of a rock here where I'm standing with Kirby and then over in the all the way up next to the wall, it's pure black. Which is which indicate it indicates that hey, this is a sneakily in the door here. How if it's also out in plain sight. And parasol because coconuts. One thing I love that they do throughout the Kirby anime quite a bit is freaking uh do things around the fact that Kirby loves to eat food. They do so much, so many little awesome, funny little gimmicks and gags based around the fact that Kirby loves to eat food and will eat anything. All the things in the anime where he actually can't eat them. <clears throat> I think I know there's at least certain enemies Kirby can't eat in the uh, Kirby anime, or that he eats but it spits back out because they don't have a, give a copy of the one he. Also, stage three, now. This is another thing I love doing with Parasol. Flow. 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 But I'm fairly certain at this point I've gotten all the copy abilities in the game and showed off their uh, descriptions. Hammers. Yeah, I want to say that you skip this entire room by uh, hitting the switch, because it just puts you to the next room after this one instead of this one. Now, as a kid, I was able to figure out this gives you, puts you into a room. 
Sadly, however, I never thought... Oh, hey, by the way, this is also a room. And I, as much as I just thought myself until entering here, I thought that it was going to be... Oh, hey, it's going to be that sand enemy, but it's actually a one-off. The sand enemy is only there when you go in from this other door. Oh, I see. This is why. Freaking death. I was trying to freaking do something, you dumb freaking hothead. Anyway, as I was about to say, this right here is why Kirby, or er, several times throughout the anime, King DDD refers to Kirby as a puff ball. These little puffs of air. You don't get anything from it, but you can stand on top of this. But yeah, that's it for that stage. And now, instead of continuing to use the Orange Ocean music, they stop that, and they actually use the level music from the next level. Well, it's a shame no more. You don't get to hear Orange Ocean music anymore. It's... Oh, it's not lost because I love this soundtrack so much. I also love the remix of this soundtrack in Kirby Air Ride. I do, as much as I do love the sound, this, the remix of the soundtrack from Kirby Air Ride, I love this version of the soundtrack best. I love this better than the Kirby's Adventure or Air Ride version of the soundtrack. This soundtrack is just so good. It's freaking absolutely gorgeous. It's beautifully composed. It perfectly fits the background of the stages. Like it. Oh, the atmosphere of the levels and the backgrounds of the stages really set the tone very well. So, you guys won't experience anything of it, but once I'm done with this level, I'll do what I've been doing. Hit this, which is what I've been doing to for my points where, okay, I go into my editing soft or my game page issue software, and I cut the video when I put this up after I'm done with each level. Oh, every second level boss, I will do that here and just have more that I have to cut out. Um because there's a thing I need to take care of, so when I'm done with this, you guys won't- it won't be any different for you guys, but I'm gonna have to do that for myself. Take care of something for somebody. I don't think so, get out while do. There. I remember struggling with this so much as a kid, and maybe even a bit as an adult, and now it's just nothing to me. I say that because, like, once again, this is another one of the things I found out when I was doing my speedrun of this game. But that should give me the one! Good. Yeah, my favorite Kirby dance. In between the amount of time to span between me doing my speedrun and then the, the main let's play, this main let's play, um, the main let's play of this game, I 
watch the first episode of my Let's Play of Kirby's Return to Dreamland. By the time you guys see this, that will be the first half of that Let's Play will be fully up, so... The videos are long, so be aware of that ahead of time, but I mean, you guys, anybody that has time to spend on those videos, please do watch them, even if you take several sessions to sit down and watch through just one video, please check out that Let's Play, because I love that game and I love that Let's Play. I will be a lot more talkative as much as I can when I get to the second part of that Let's Play, but it's going to be a while, quite a while before I get to recording that, and even longer before you guys see it. Yeah, and have both of them at once. Well, they say I need Needle, which is not an ability I haven't gotten much, and I actually have not shown off the um, description of the ability, so I'm glad I got it. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. Hands off. Here, Pony Spikes, there, Pony Spikes. Hands off. Here, Pony Spikes, there, Pokey Spikes. I tried to do that to avoid dying so I could get the maximum tomato that's up ahead, but nope, that happened. Seems like there might be another UFO on me yet that I didn't spawn in. Nope, that was the last one. Sigh. And that sucks because of what's coming up. Seriously, that's crap. That's another script that I haven't shown off. Oh wait, I did show it off. It was the warning use only as a last resort. So both in both my speedrun and in this playthrough, I was not able to have you all fall at this point. I hate that. Yeah, I knew that was gonna happen, stupid enemy. And here we have the final Meta Knight skirmish of the game. For crap's sake. <sighs> Come on. There I went, thankfully. <laughs> oh, I know what I missed. Failure. I get it in the speed run the first time, but I forget about it in the Let's Play. Also, Freaking the Kirby Sparks that I set off there were flashing when I died. Interesting detail. I imagine that's a glitch. Or either it's a glitch or the game does that intentionally. Really? The freaking UFOs don't spawn in? Are we serious with that crap? Well, luckily I have a solution for that. Um, okay, there's the museum. Ordinarily, you take UFO down there, but they're not respawning, so I have an alternative. I can freaking fight Fireline. Need to show off this fight anyway, and if this ha that hadn't happened, I would have probably failed to remember to show it off, so... Once again, everything in life happens for a reason. Regardless of what your religious beliefs are, everything happens for a reason. That thought burning, and I was like, wait, Fire Lion is the frickin' arena boss of this level. You stupid Waddle Dee, can you not? 
Piece of crap! <sighs> Seriously. What I wanted to do is get these spark enemies together. For the usual get hammer. I knew I could do that, but I wanted to use burning, but of course that dumb wild thing falls on me. There. To be able to use hammer to get that, though, you have to be quick on the draw to tap the A button to make sure you don't fall and die. There. Now it's time to fight none other than Meta Knight. Now, interesting thing about this fight, if you have an ability that, uh, that you have prior to picking up the sword, and as long as you beat Meta Knight and don't die, you will have that ability after you um, beat Meta Knight. Otherwise, um, if you don't have an ability and pick up the sword ability after you beat Meta Knight, you'll of course still have the sword ability. Will it eventually go away, or do you, are you forced to use the sword? I'm fairly certain you are, but I'm just making sure that if you, it's not like you wait long enough, you can fight him with whatever ability you want. Nope. Oh well. Can't inhale it either. Okay, I see I got extremely lucky with frickin' destroying him in my, uh... Speed run of this game. I must have got really lucky with his RNG to wreck him like I did in my speed run. Because I took no damage and I got every single hit on him one after another to kill him. Or should I say defeated because Meta Knight doesn't die? Because much like Kirby, he's also a star, star warrior. Thank you. 